All right, notes 4.1 are on radian measure. Um, so this unit is on trigonometry, and um, you guys learned about trigonometry in the 3U class. But now we're going to talk about trigonometry in terms of radians. You did everything in terms of degrees last year. So first thing we need to do is define what a radian is. So I'm going to give you the definition of a radian. Don't freak out about the definition. Um, we're going to talk about what this really means. So a radian is a unit of angle just like degree, a degree is a unit of angle, but it's going to be equal to a different amount. Um, and it's equal to an angle at the center of the circle um, whose arc is equal to the radius. Okay, so um, essentially what it's saying is that if I have a circle right here, if I have a radius right here, um, and I have an arc, this arc is this amount right here, so we'll call this S for our arc, we have our radius, our uh, radian is going to be equal to, um, so theta, our radius, or our radian is going to be equal to uh, the arc over the radius. Okay, so that's basically what it's saying. Or we can say that the arc is equal to uh, the radian times r. Okay, so this is another way to measure an angle. So how many degrees is one radian? Well, it all comes back down to our unit circle. So if you remember in a unit circle, we have a circle, and the reason why it's called a unit circle is because the radius is one. So if I want to find how much it is all the way around right here, all I have to do is find my circumference. Well, I know that the formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, but my radius is 1 because it's a unit circle. So the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi. So I know the full uh, distance around a circle that's a unit circle is 2 pi, but we also know that it's 360 degrees. So we can say right here that um, 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. So this is 2 pi radians. So how do I figure out how much 1 radian is? Well, the way I can do that is just to get rid of this 2 pi. So I can divide both sides by 2 pi. And whatever answer I get is how much 1 radian is equal to. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take 360, and I'm going to divide it by 2 pi. And I end up getting about 57 degrees. So one radian is equal to 57 degrees. We know that one radian is about 57 degrees right here. The really important relationship, it comes from our unit circle. And sorry that the circle is drawn so badly. But right here, um, if I know that all the way around is uh, 2 pi, then I can say that halfway around from um, from here all the way to here is going to be 1 pi. So this is 1 pi, and then we've got 2 pi around here. If I kept going, then this would be 3 pi, 4 pi, so on and so forth. It's cyclical. It keeps going, which is why we end up getting um, our sine wave, okay, or our cosine wave. So right here, we can say that 1 pi is just a semicircle, half of a circle, which is 180 degrees. So that's a really important relationship, that 1 pi is 180 degrees. So 1 radian of, or sorry, a 1 pi radian is equal to 180 degrees, or I can say that 1 degree is going to be pi over 180 radians. Okay, so now that I figured that out, it says convert each of the following angles to radians. So if I want to convert this to, to radians, I know this is 20 degrees, and I want my degrees to cancel. So I'm going to use this relationship right here, because if I have 180 degrees right here, um, it's uh, 1 degree is 1 1 1 80th of pi. So I can just multiply by pi over 180 because my degrees here will cancel. So I end up getting 20 pi over 180. But when I do this right here, if I were to um, simplify this, uh, this will become a 1 and this will become a 9. So 20 degrees is equal to pi over 9. So let's go back to our unit circle and see if that makes sense or not. So if we have 20 degrees right here, 
we know that 20 degrees, if this is 0 degrees, 20 degrees will be somewhere around here. We know that this is 20 degrees. Does it make sense that this would be pi over 9? Well, 40 degrees would be 2 pi over 9. 60 degrees would be 3 pi over 9. Um, and if I were to make my way all the way around, all the way until I get 180 degrees, I should get 9 pi over 9, or just pi. So that should make sense that 20 degrees is pi over 9. Okay, so now the next one, 225 degrees, I want to convert this to radians. So I know that the relationship is pi radians for every 180 degrees. So right here, I can go ahead and simplify. 225 and 180 are both divisible by 45. When I divide 180 by 45, I end up getting 4. When I divide 225 by 45, I get 5. So I get 5 pi over 4. Now let's look on the unit circle to see if that makes sense. So we're talking about 225 degrees, which is past 180 degrees. So right here, we know up to here is 180 degrees, and then we've got another uh, 45 to get to 225 degrees right here. So does this make sense? Well, let's see. We know that 180 degrees should be pi, and we said that this should be 5 pi over 4, or in other words, essentially, it's 1 and 1 quarter pi. So here's a whole pi plus another quarter. So it does make sense that 225 degrees is 5 pi over 4. All right, so now the next question asks us to convert radian measure to degrees. So in order to be able to do this, I have to see what's the relationship to go from radians to degrees. So we know that um, we have 180 degrees is 1 pi. So if we have 5 pi over 6, I want to I uh, realize that it's 180 degrees for every pi radians. So this right here will cancel, my, pi, my pi's will cancel, and then the 6 and the 180 have a 6 in common. So when I divide the 6 by 6, I get 1. When I divide the 180 by 6, I get 30. So when I multiply 5 by 30, I get 150 degrees. So I know that 5 pi over 6 is 150 degrees. Okay, let's look on the unit circle to see if that seems to make sense. So if I were to look right here, 150 degrees is a little bit shy of 180, so I know from 0 up to this point right here, I've got 150 degrees. If I know that on this seg segment right here, I'll, I'll be at pi, it does make sense that I've got 5 sixths of pi uh, matching up with 150. Okay, so the last example that we have for converting uh, between radian and degrees is 1.75 radians. Sometimes your radians won't be measured uh, in terms of pi, but it's the same idea. I'm still going to take 1.75, sorry about that, 1.75, and I'm going to multiply it by 180 over pi. But this time I don't really see much of anything that's going to cancel out. I'm going to make this over 1. So I'm just going to multiply my numerator. Um, and my numerators will give me 315, and then 1 times pi just gives me pi. Divide 315 by pi, and you'll get about 100.3 degrees, okay? Now, um, again, this should make sense to us because 1.75 is pretty close to half of pi. If pi is 3.14, Half of it is going to be about, let's figure this out. Uh, we'll just figure out what pi over 2 is right here. So I'm going to take pi, divide it by 2. We get about 1.57, right? So if we get 1.57 here, then when I look at this answer right here, this is pretty close to that value. And half of 180 is, a, is 90. So this should correspond with this 1.75 radians that we have right here, okay? question that we have here. The London Eye Ferris wheel has a diameter of 135 meters and completes one revolution in 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of what this looks like. Okay. I know my diameter is 135 meters. Therefore, my radius right here is going to be half of that. So 135 divided by 2, I get 67.5. So I know that my radius is 67.5 meters, okay? And it takes 30 minutes to go around the wheel, 
So we know that it takes 30 minutes right here to make one complete revolution or to cover two pi. So we know it's 30 minutes to go two pi radians around, okay? Um, two pi r radians around, okay? So right here, in order for me to be able to figure this out, I need to figure out what the radians per second is going to be. If it's 30 minutes, I need to convert my 30 minutes to seconds. And I know that there's uh, 60 seconds in a minute. So 30 times 60 gives me 1,800 seconds to make a 2 pi revolution. So how do I figure out what my angular velocity is? I just take 2 pi and divide it by 1,800 seconds. What does angular velocity mean? It's just asking you how fast is my uh, wheel spinning in terms of radians, okay? So I just have to divide 2 pi uh, divided by 1800, and I end up getting um, 0 0.003491. So 0 0.003491 radians per second, okay? So that means that um, that's my speed, that's my angular velocity. So we can go ahead and say that our answer right here is going to be about 0.00349 radians per second. Okay, so now it says how far has a rider traveled at 10 minutes into the ride? Well, if I were to look at my uh, Ferris wheel right here that we have, 10 minutes into the ride, if it takes me 30 minutes to go all the way around, um, then 10 minutes into the ride is one third of the way around because uh, 10 over 30 is one third, okay? So the question is, how do I figure this out? So if um, I know that uh, my arc length is equal to theta r, and I'm trying to figure out what my arc length is. So I wanna figure out what, my, what this s is. Well, how do I figure out what my theta is? Well, if um, one full revolution is two pi, so if 2 pi is a full revolution and I'm only doing a third of the revolution, then it's 2 pi over 3, so that's what my um, theta will be. That's how many radians that I have here. So my s is going to equal to 2 pi over 3 multiplied by my radius, which we figured out is 67.5 meters. So when I go ahead and multiply all that information through, I end up getting... Um, right here, this is gonna be over one. So I end up getting 135 pi over three, which is approximately 141.4 meters, okay?